Who's we got this? Hello? Oh! <laughs> So this week I'm talking to the infamous Johnny Barr. He has got one of the longest CVs in musical theatre that I have ever seen. And coming up next, he's going to be taking part in the online version of Godspell in Concert. We'll be talking all about that and what it was like to be in the Les Mis movie. Something I know all about. Hello. <laughs> look at you and your proper lighting. It's so impressive. It's going to look beautiful. Oh, no, is my T-shirt backwards? No. It is on your... No, 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 no. It isn't. No. Okay. I wasn't sure. <laughs> How are you, Mr. John? I'm good. Is this, is this theatrical enough? Is that good enough? I can, is that all is that theatrical? Work? Yeah. No, <laughs> look. I don't have any pictures. I don't have any posters of any shows I'm in. These are just... These are all original, original copy. Um prints of the original posters. Oh, they're, so those they're, aren't the shows that you're, you've been in? No, no, no. I mean, I've been in a couple of them, but these aren't. That is the original That is the original print of Sunny in the Park with George, with the gold leaf. Only a thousand of those got printed, and I got oh. one of them. You yeah. have probably got one of the longest CVs I've ever seen. And you'll oh, need that's... a whole wall just for you. Well, I to be honest, probably, but I'm not that kind of actor. I, when I come in my front door, I like to turn it all off. Do you know what I mean? So my Maybe. study is the, yeah, I've got no interest in show. But I don't play show tunes. I just got no interest. Ah, see, I, I've got the wrong impression about you. I thought it was in your blood. Because you've been doing this since you were a kid, right? It's all I can do. <laughs> it's all you know. <laughs> So let's go back to that because you made your West End debut at 12 years old. I was 12 years old. I was in um, Oliver with Roy Hudd at the Albury Theatre, which is now the Noel Coward. Yes. How crazy is that? And incredible. That was 1978. So I'm celebrating 43 years in show business this year. Wow. Crazy. And before that, so you went Sylvia Youngs at that Sylvia point? Youngs, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I didn't go to the school, she didn't have the school then. She just wow. had evening classes. But I, I grew up with Claire Burt, Francis Raphael, Nick Berry, Matt Ryan, um, Catherine Diggs. I mean, some real wonderful people, you know. Yeah, so for those who don't know, so Francis Ravel was... Is Sylvia Young's daughter. Yes. Yes. And did Les Mis. And was the original Eponine in Les Mis. Tony Award winning Eponine in Les Mis. And was she there when you Broadway. did Les Mis? No, no, no. Francis had just left to go to New York to do it. Um, we had Laura Hamilton and Lindsay Haightley in the time I was there. Uh, I was understudy to Angeras, to Chris Howard. And Lindsay's, Lindsay Haightley's opening night was my uh, first night as Angeras, so. And this was when it was at the Palace, wasn't it? Uh, the pa this, I was in the second stroke third company. You know, the show was in its very early, early days. And how old were you then? Six months. How old were you? Oh, how old, how old was I? I was, how, I was 22, 22, I think, yeah. I've been in my flat 33 years this year, so, yeah, rough deduction. I'm terrible at maths, but yes. Wow. Let's go back to your West End debut at that age. How did it feel? Were you aware of it, or was it just kind of, uh, eh? I, I, well, at my junior school, I was a bit of a, I used to sing in the assemblies and that, and I always, always be the kid to get up and sing. And then I, when I went to my comprehensive school, I'd only been there a, a few months and the, I found the music department and um, Douglas Shaw, who was the head of music at my comprehensive school, um, took me under his wing and basically gave me the confidence. And then I auditioned for Sylvia Youngs and Sylvia liked my voice. And then um, the rest is kind of like, Part of my that's part of my journey then i i went on a diet to get into oliver because i was i wasn't a big kid but i went i was a bit healthy looking so i went on a diet and then i got into oliver and that was really the beginning of me wanting to definitely know that i had to do this and did they tell you to go on a diet or was that no 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 but i um i knew i had to go well my mum basically knew i had to go on a diet <laughs> Amazing. That's how dedicated I am, Phil. Oh, I know. 
slave to your craft. Absolutely. And then, of course, you did the Les Mis movie. I was very fortunate to be in the Les Mis movie, Convict 5. I know exactly. you wait. I think you had it harder than me. So I did all the scenes in Greenwich and Pinewood. Whereas, where was your, the docks? Was that... We were at the docks in Portsmouth, yeah. Incredible. How was that filming, though? Was that... Six days in stinky... The only way the extras kept warm was by peeing on themselves. And it's by the end of the... It was literally like, uh... Oh, that's yeah. not terrific. It, well, it wasn't horrific, but we, 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 there were five of us. There was um, Adam Jones, um, Calvin Cornwall, myself, and I can't remember the other guy. There were, there were supposed to be, f oh. Are you still there? Hello. I've just sent you a message going, oh, it's logged off. What happened? I have no idea, but you're back. I'm, I'm here now. That's She's time. back, dear. Oh. <laughs> so you were saying there was five of you? There were five of us and they cut it down to four, four lead roles. They cut the line they cut out, which was going to be initially, originally my line is, how long, oh Lord, before you, she lets me wait. And that got cut, thank God. Because then I got given, I know she'll wait, I know that she'll be true, which, so that was my line, yeah. I know she'll wait, I know that she'll be true. And they used my line at the, on the Oscars. There you go. They did. Yeah. It was a great audition process because um, I, had, I only had one audition for it. I tell you, I had, I had to go in and meet Nina Gold. Do a, do a, a, a singing, do you hear the people sing to the camera just like this? And then my recall was the day before I started rehearsals for pantomime um, back in 2011. And, um, and I'd shaved all my, my hair off. I'm, I mean, I'm quite bald anyway, but I shaved it all off. And it was so funny because Tom Hooper said to me, um, this is probably a really stupid question. He said, but would you mind shaving your head? And I just went. <laughs> And what is funny is they asked me not to shave my face or my hair for three months. And I literally, I looked like a tramp. I mean, I sh shave my hair regularly and I shave like every other day. And I didn't, and I, I got there on the first day of filming and uh, until the week before we started filming, we had our teeth made. We had the, the guy who made the teeth made the film, made the, the, um, the teeth for, um, for Meryl Streep for Margaret Thatcher in the, in the Thatcher film. And he made all of our teeth. So we had those. And we had a makeup test done. And she said, great, you look great. And I, then I got there on the actual day. And they said, oh, no, you look, you look too great. And they shaved it all off. And, then, and I'd lost out on two jobs, two adverts, with two well-paid adverts, because I looked like a tramp. And they shaved off my beard and then stuck one on. I could have done these two jobs. I was furious. That's how it goes in showbiz. Showbiz, kid. Showbiz. Well, I could, could I've only ever known you with the skinned head. I was looking back through your, uh, a few of your albums and some of those covers are glorious. <laughs> I did have a, I had a lot of hair. In Les Mis, I had a mullet. I mean, I really did have a lot of, a lot of hair. I mean, is it the one for in whatever time we have? That yeah. Is, that is a smooth barnet over there. That's absolutely, there was, there was a lot of hair going on. <laughs> well, let's talk about it. So five albums you've had now? I've made five solo albums, yes. Wow. And how did that first start? Like, because this was back before you could, I mean, it's easy now for anybody to just log onto iTunes and upload something, but you, your first one came out in 96? 19, well, 1994, um, right. in whatever time we have came out. But basically, um, when uh, I was doing my cabaret down at um, the Mountbatten Hotel, and a lot of people were saying to me, do you have anything so I can buy? So I made some dodgy tapes. So I made some, I went to a studio, 
and uh, recorded a, like a demo really. And then um, when I went to New York to do my, I made my cabaret debut in New York um, and people were saying, can I buy anything? So when I came back, um, a series of events happened. Unfortunately, my, my, my dear old nan passed away and the money she left me and made my first album, A Small Affair with my nan's money. Oh, no. Nice. Um, and then, um, so I was very blessed. And then I, uh, and I, ha I had a bit of other help as well with that financially, but I, uh, it, a lot of it was basically my, my nan's money. So it was one, one way of my nan living on, because my nan really believed in me, you know? Yeah. I don't think any plans to put them all onto iTunes. They're all on iTunes, yes. Nice. They're all on iTunes and Spotify. Amazing. And we've got to talk about a certain little album that you featured on, which you're soon going to be resurrecting. Your part on Godspell. Well, that was such a... Well, going back to the albums, I um, on every album, I have recorded a Stephen Short song. Um, right. Stephen and I, are, we are, we're great friends. I've known him for 33 years this year. Um, wow. How did you first meet him? I did the workshop for Trevor Nunn of The Baker's Wife. I see. And Joe Stein and Stephen Schwartz were in the whole rehearsal process. Joe Stein wrote the book too, She Loves Me and Fiddler on the Roof. I mean, two greats of, and there is Trevor Nunn. I mean, in the show alone, there was Alan Armstrong playing the lead, Siobhan McCarthy, uh, Dan Massey played um, the, like, the, 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 uh, the, the main villager. Uh, I mean, it was an incredible cast, and there was me, this kind of 22-year-old kid. Um, but it was so funny, because when Trevor offered me the show, I said, I love this show. I said, it's one of my favourite scores. And I seem to be one of the only few people that seem to actually know the score. And Stephen, Stephen and our friendship basically came about. A friend of mine was doing a production of Pippin at the Water Rats. So I said to Stephen, I said, look, a friend of mine is playing Pippin. Would you like to see it? And he said, absolutely. So... Um, this is the days before the mobile phones and internet. This is 1980, 1988. Um, so I didn't bother booking a ticket, didn't bother ringing my friend telling him I was coming and let alone bringing Stephen Schwartz. We got there, it was November, it was pissing down with rain. We got there and it said a big sign, show canceled. So there I am stuck on the grazing road with Stephen Schwartz. And I said, what should we do now then? He went, let's go for dinner. And he went for dinner. And that was the beginning, beginning of our friendship really. And what's he like? Because I've met him a few times and I've heard people who've worked with him say he's so generous and... Oh, he's adorable. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I'll show you. Just, just, just a little bit of... Just a little bit. Can you see that? That's the Godspell book written by Carol Dejeer, right? But inside, this was... It got, can you read that? Yes. Future friends for 30 years, but who's counting? Lots of love, Stephen Schwartz. There's that. And then going back to this album, he was my date, effectively, when, when my, one of my best friends, um, Jenna Russell, made her Broadway debut. Stephen and I went, and there's Jenna, Stephen, and myself at the opening night for Jenna oh, Sunday in the Park with George. Oh, my God. And Jenna, of course, is going to be taking part. We'll come to that in a minute. Yes. Um, the concert version, which you're both going to be part of. We are. Yeah, so, going back, so Godspell was written, I think it was 1970 originally, and then Stephen came on board a year later to write the score. Uh, so I gather, yes, I don't really know much about the show's history. I've never, I did Godspell at school. Yes. We did a concert version of all the songs at school. So I knew these songs so well. Uh, and just another little story. When... When we were doing, um, after we'd been friends for a couple of years, my mum invited Stephen over to the family home to have a Sunday lunch. And um, he was having, sitting down with my mum and dad. And I went into my front room and sang, day by day, oh Lord, day by, because that's the song I used to sing along to that London cast recording with David Essex. How weird is that? The composer <laughs> sitting in one room. And... No, I didn't sing it in front of him. I was singing quietly to myself in my front room while he was having dinner with my mum and dad. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant you'd like put a show and tell on after dinner. Oh God, no, no, definitely not. But yeah, so like you mentioned there, David Essex. So when it came over to London in 1971, it was David Essex, Jeremy Irons, I think, and Martin Judy Covington, Gay Soper, um, Neil Fitzwilliam. I mean, the most incredible, incredible cast. Yes. Yeah. No. So you didn't no. No, 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 no. Um, 
and then they made a movie version in 1973. Which I've just re-watched. I've seen it many times, but I haven't seen it in about maybe, I don't know, maybe 20 years. And I just downloaded it the other day just to get a little bit of a flavour of the... Isn't it? It's, it's, it, the opening scene that you just... It, they're in New York and that Jesus is, is calling them in New York, you know. I mean, I think it's probably worthy of an update now with what's going on with Trump. I mean, yeah. can you imagine just the the stuff that could be brought into it now? Look, it was controversial at its time, wasn't it? Yeah. And it was the same time as Jesus Christ Superstar. So you had it was before Superstar. It was just before Superstar. Yeah. And you had both of these shows, which kind of really kind of reinvented the theatre as a yeah. genre. Yeah. The slicing in pop and rock. It's yeah. Like found attractive when you first heard those songs. I just, I mean, I just remember day by, I mean, I think at one point, day by day was the most recorded song, other than my way, I think day by day was the most recorded song of all time. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, even Silla Black has recorded it. Yeah. Jim <laughs> Bob <laughs> Day by day. Day by day. Oh. But yeah, so then that brings us nicely up to back in 1993, was it, that you did the Catholic I think we recorded it, I think we recorded it in 1992, I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, but I do know that we recorded it on my birthday, and we were in Abbey Road, and I sang my, I sang my song on the Willows with Paul Manuel and Clive Rowe on my birthday at Abbey Road in the main studio. Wow. Where Silla Black recorded it, what's it all about? I'll see, you know, and um, the Beatles used to record, incredible. I mean, I've been to Abbey Road and it's an incredible building, isn't it? Oh. Like, how, but how did it feel to, and obviously Stephen conducted. Stephen played the piano on some of the tracks and conducted, yeah. I mean, that was, that was great. I mean, you know, you're kind of, you're in the room with, you know, in, kind of, it's, yeah, it was extraordinary. And it had Darren Day. Darren Day, Jackie Dankworth, Claire Burt, Sam Shaw, Paul Manuel, Clive Rowe, um, John Barrowman, Ruthie Henschel, Elizabeth Sastra, um, myself. Uh, I think that, I think I remembered everyone. You know, the really weird thing is, right, is that about three years later, when I was 14 at school, <laughs> and we did a production of Godspell, and I had to sing On the Willows. So I must have, at 14 years old, been listening to you singing it as a cast recording. Wow. How weird is that? I mean, I don't wow. think you it as well. <laughs> I'm sure you did. I'm sure you did, but... I never got um, it. Oh God, that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, that is their kind of the go-to recording now. I don't know, you know, not I'm saying it's definitive or anything. The first one that had it as a feature Effie song in that kind of, including the prologue. The Babel and um, Beautiful City. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're, I mean, maybe that's why, maybe in the Wikipedia, now, I think it comes up as being, it's the most concise. Version. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, Stephen Schultz has gone on to do Wicked and most recently Prince of Egypt. He, he, I mean, he's a legend, but like... He is. Godspell seems to be one of, along with Children of Eden, it's one of those shows that isn't really done that often. I think the last time 
I mean, last time they did it was a concert version in, at Hackney Empire five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Now, uh, Children of Eden, I did a lot of the original demos for, but I, I was the first person ever to sing In Whatever Time We Have, and I recorded that with Frances Raphael, literally the day before she gave birth to her daughter, Eliza. Literally, she, gen she was so heavily pregnant. She'd had a terrible pregnancy. Um, she was so pregnant. And Jenna, my friend Jenna Russell was standby. She'd learned it as well, just in case, because I need a certain amount of time to do this demo. So, so much so that when I did my album in whatever time we have, yeah. I sang it with Jenna on, on the album. Have you got any songs from Godspell on any of your albums? Not Godspell, no, no. I was going to ask, are there any songs? So obviously, you now come back <laughs> for this special 50th anniversary online concert version for the Hope Mill Theatre. And again, so you're reunited with Jenna and Darren. Um, but this is obviously a, a, such a strange environment. You won't actually come face to face with them or see them. No. Um, independently. That's a, that's the great shame actually because I'm doing yeah. on the willows on this on this version is on myself. I start it and then Jenna joins and then we 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 join and then Sally and Shipley finishes it off and then the three of us and and I I recorded my vocal. Jenna's just done hers and I think Sally's doing hers soon. And then we've got to film it. I don't know how we're going to do that, but it's you've going to happen. It up. So you haven't got Clive or Jay back. You've got the girls. I've got the girls. And how have, they, have you sang duets with them? So you have. Well, like Jenna, Jenna and I have known one another since we were kids. Yeah. Um, Jenna's a very she's a huge part of my life. Um, and, uh, and Sally and Triplett I have known forever because Sally and Jenna are great, great friends. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, but Sally's like Jenna and I, she was a child performer and, you know, and then kind of, so we're still hanging around. And how come, so you worked with Michael Strassen, the director? Uh, twice. I did uh, Assassins for him. Yeah, um, at the Union Theatre. At the Union. Did you see that? I did, yeah. I mean, it was an incredible, I mean, the cast for a fringe show, yeah. you had Nick Holder, Glyn Kerslake, Lee McDonald. Um, Paul Callan, uh, I mean, he just, uh, Joe Alessi playing Zangara. I mean, Strassen directing, uh, um, it was just the most extraordinary, one of those shows that I look back on with such, such fondness, you know, thinking, oh my God, you know, and no, the late Nolan Frederick, who was the first ever black balladeer. Wow. He played like Obama, so, which like is that. very groundbreaking for Strassen. And then before that, which I also saw, when you did Tommy. I did Tommy after. Did it. I did Tommy after. Oh, was that after? Of that was after, did. yeah. Yeah. I did Tommy in my, I did, I think I did, um, I actually did. It's very funny. God, I've just thought about this. I did Assassins when I was 40, and I did, I had my birthday. Our first day of tech was my 50th birthday on Tommy. I, well, yeah, so five years yeah. ago. And that was a beautiful production. So you had like, you had Danny Becker, who's now in. Prince I love Danny Becker. I love Danny Becker. Yeah, yeah no. Yeah. And who had Giovanni Spano? Was there? Well, look, I had to do a duet with Giovanni and the man is, is, is a god. I had to dance with him and sing with him. And I used to say to uh, Strassen and to, to Mark Smith, the choreographer, Oh my God, he's so, I mean, he really is that triple threat. But do you know what? He made me really up my game. I was on the wings every night before going on game. Because it was like a fossey routine. Everything yeah. was very precise. And, um, and again, you know, I was playing the old, the old kind of character in it. So, but I mean, oh my God, that boy's voice and talent. And he's such a beautiful boy. I mean, he's just, yeah. I'm very, very fond of him. I'm very fond. So obviously, having worked with Michael twice in the past, how has it changed? Now, how has it 
how have you had to adapt to doing it online? How well, it? just in being, I mean, we, we were friends before we worked together. We'd known of one another for years. Um, and uh, he, he made an album, I made an album, kind of, so we were kind of in that periphery in that kind of, we've both been in Les Mis. Um, with Strass now, because we're in touch anyway, we FaceTime and all that stuff. And Strass is great like this. He's just going to make his, he, he's going to make this so beautiful. I know he had a great conversation with Stephen Schwartz the other day. He has this concept of, um, it's a, I, I think you can call it a timeline or like a heartbeat. So say for instance, on the Willows will start. And then when Jenna comes in, I'll press like this line and I'll kind of do that. And then she will come into the frame and then I will move out. So it's going to be very, they're getting animation in, and it's going to be wonderful. I, I truly believe ah. this is the first time Godspell would have ever, ever been seen like this. And I think also in a funny way, will really make the listener listen because they've got no scenery. They've got no one eating a bag of crisps or picking their nose or having a sip out of their, you know, actually you can sit there and just watch these incredible this incredible cast sing these incredible songs. Did you feel that when you were recording it? Did you feel a pressure or a kind of... Oh, yeah. My friend Ali Jaya recorded my vocal up at her studio. We recorded it in her shed, but she's got all the top-notch technology. And I said, I want to sing this better than I did, um, you know, when I was... God, um, how long is 1992? That's quite a long time ago. That's Yeah, that's like... 28 years. Yeah, it's a long time. Well, I can still... You've heard the recording. I sent it to you. I think I sing it better now than I did then. You sound amazing. I had a little sneak preview, and it is sounding incredible. I'm yeah. so excited for it. Like, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm obviously a big fan of yours, but, like, I have had the biggest fa crush on Darren Day since I was... Oh, he's gorgeous. So, yeah. I can't wait to see him resurrect it as well. Yeah. Um, and, of course, you've got... All the bit like Daniel Johnson, got Natalie Green. Natalie Green, who's doing Prince of Egypt with Danny Becker, you know, yep. at the moment. Um, it's, it's, and jo Jodie Steele. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> Ali, my, my great friend, Ali Jairo, I got involved. I, I spoke to Thomas and Strass, and, and I said, well, what about Ali for that song? And I went, oh, could you get her? And I went, if anyone can get her, I can get her. So I rang her and said, would you be interested? And she went, oh, my God. Again, Stephen Schwartz loves Ali, and he loves Jenna, you know, through, basically through me. But that's how, you know, it's um, amazing. So, yeah, it's incredible. And we've got to talk about the Home Mill Theatre. So this was obviously set up five years ago by the boys Will and Joe. And they were probably one of the first people at the beginning of lockdown to, to talk about how theatres like theirs are under threat. And they're, they've done such a great job of kind of keeping hold on to some hope. I mean, hope's in the yes, hope, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, no. And they've done a brilliant concert. So recently they did a Some Enchanted Evening with Maria Freeman. Most recently they did an evening with Jonathan Harvey. And this is another fundraiser. So all the money, all you guys are doing this for free to support yes. them. And all the money is going to be going to Acting for Others and the Hope Mill Theatre and National Aid. It's also, there's a wonderful um, new charity set up by someone I've got to know through Darren called Tony, Tony Wilshire. And he set up a, a charity called It's Okay Not To Be Okay. Right. And he's, a, he's, a, he's an ex-soldier and, um, and he's, I've been do, talking to him and the charity, his charity personally in, throughout this time has saved a few people's lives. Yeah, yeah. Um, Darren talk about it already. Yeah. So um, I should have worn the t-shirt today actually, but it's in the wash, sorry. I wore it the other day. But um, I should have worn that. But well, um, I think that's a great that. charity. <laughs> I might wear it when I record my song, actually. It might be quite yeah. nice. Um, um, but, but yeah, you know, I think this is a great idea. Yeah. But Acting for Others is a brilliant charity. Everybody knows them. But they do their, their book it campaigns every year. And they've been going for since the 60s, I believe. Well, I think every show I've ever been in, around whenever at that time of the year it is, I must have held countless buckets over the yeah. years you know i think they now have about 14 charities that they distribute all the money to which is incredible yeah incredible it's yeah. So weird, especially now when like the, yeah. like you say these are the charities that people are turning to in this, yeah. this time but we've got, we need to talk about how this experience has been for you about lockdown because you have 
been ill yourself? I had it for nearly seven weeks. I was very yeah. ill. Um, yeah, I kind of, I had it for about a week and then I, I it was quite bad, but my neighbour is a nurse. My, my neighbour Lucy is a nurse. And she said, well, you definitely, that's definitely COVID. And then all of, all of a sudden, it was on a Sunday, I started to feel better. And on the Monday, I felt, oh, I feel much. And then by the Monday evening, this cough and this fever and this darkness, it was, it was horrendous. And it went on and on and on like that. It was pretty, I didn't have to go to hospital, thank God, but um, I rang my doctor and it was, it was really, really scary. And this was obviously, so this was after lockdown had started, so you were already... I, I came down with it. I'd been teaching at Erdang all day on the, on the Friday the 13th. And I, I mean, I teach for seven hours there on, a, on yeah. Friday, which is a long day. And I'm usually tired anyway. I'm, I'm getting old, you know. But um, I got in that night and I, I got a takeaway and I literally thought, I don't feel, I really don't feel right. And on the Saturday, I got mail from Erdang and a couple of the other colleges where I teach saying, no more teaching for the foreseeable future. And my little body just went like, oh, and I went, great, I can have a bit of a break, you know, because I went straight from Pento, straight into full on teaching, you know, which I'm very, very thankful for and very grateful. But all of a sudden I thought I can have a bit of a break, but actually I was coming down with COVID. Wow. It was horrendous, yeah, it was not nice. And obviously, for, so to see what was happening with this virus, and then to get it yourself, we how did you feel? Were you worried? Like yeah, oh, very. I mean, there were a couple of nights. I'm not going to lie. As I said, I'm I'm 55 next week, and I'm getting older, and so I'm in that kind of vulnerable bracket. Although I'm I'm healthy, but there were a couple of nights, and I looked at my ceiling, thinking, if I have to call 999 and go to hospital, I might not. I might not. I might not come out. I might go on a ventilator, and and in those early on. The people like Kate Garraway's husband and people were being put more or less straight onto a ventilator. Yeah. And, and now what they're working out now from what the little bits I've seen and read is that the COVID is one thing, but what it actually, and how your, how your own immune system reacts to it, which is the scary thing. Yeah. So I was very, very lucky and I feel, I feel so blessed, you know? But are you now kind of more sensitive when you see people complaining about the restrictions or complaining about having to wear a mask and you might like guys come on i won't say what i'd like to say but yes yeah. i think you kind of go really i mean people call it a hoax and say you know people like trump saying it'll be gone but no he's son saying it'll be gone by the summer and it's, it's something to stop um trump's presidential election prospect you kind of go really yeah crazy um but yeah, so so you're, you're lucky, you're in the country. You I'm bugger off. I, I, I'm, I'm so envious of you. Yeah, I, I was able to get away straight away and I've been up here the whole time. Um, so I am lucky, I'm very fortunate. Yeah. Um, so after you then began feeling better, um, how have you been occupying yourself? I mean, this I, I went straight back into teaching five days a week online. Erdang, um, three days a week and um, International College of Musical Theatre for two, for two weeks, for two days. So I was full on for nine, nine weeks. I only finished last week. That challenge to, can I, I've spoke to a few students about how they found teaching, like online teaching challenging, but how is it for a teacher? Well, I think I got a lot out of them that they, I don't think I would have got out of them in the room. Right. Um, there's something about just suddenly sitting down and just singing to the camera yeah. without, you know, there's a room full of kids. Normally they're all, flicking through their music because they know they're going to be next. It's so distracting. Um, and whereas this was just me and them. And I had a couple, of, I had one kid who's amazing. Um, amazing. He, he's, he's going to be a talent to watch out for. He's not playing Dear Evan Hansen in a few years time. I, amazing talent. But he was singing Proud of Your Boy. And I could see this woman walked by and he was in his kitchen. And I said, who, stop singing. I said, who's that? And he said, it's my mum. I said, is she busy? And he went, mum. So I said, hi, I'm Johnny Shiloh. I've heard all about you. And I said, are you, are you really busy at the moment? And she went, no, I'm, and I said, sit down. And I said, Elliot, sing to your mum. Well, this kid had such a moment singing proud of your boy to his mum. There was not a drop. I mean, literally I was bawling my eyes out. That wouldn't have happened in the room. No, exactly. That was a real little moment. I had a few of those. So were you teaching 
um, students individually or did you have any way they were all in the same? No, they were all on a Zoom or whatever. Um, and then basically, but when they when they come in to do their thing, I mute me and turn my camera off and I just watch them and I notate them, you know. Incredible. But I loved it. I mean, I really, the, the, only, the only downside to that was is they were singing onto backing tracks, which I hate. I hate backing tracks because it's like, uh, 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 you know. But then it just, I mean, it, it sets us up because they've, they've never got to do any self tapes or. Yeah. They're going to be so experienced. Now. Well, that's what I basically, um, I was talking to an actor friend of mine earlier on today, Norman Bowman, about self tape. I haven't done a self tape in about three and a half years because I refuse to do them. Because <laughs> I, I come from a generation when I was in the room where you'd go in and people say, that was very good, but could you do it like this? Or you're doing a self tape, you spend a whole day sometimes doing it. You've got to find a mate, you've got to learn the bloody thing then you've got to you send it off you've got to edit it and all that i can't be asked anymore i'm not interested it's lazy they need to get people in the room it's lazy and what else have you been up to then have you been doing any on like didn't you pop up in the hello harry online no i didn't unfortunately i i think bat boy i don't know how bat boy got missed out on that one but um but i did watch it because i sent you the link didn't i yeah because yeah. was in it wasn't he yeah fabulous he's the man the, he's the most he really truly is one of the most beautiful souls i have ever met he to go into that theater i mean that boy was such a, a real experience for all of us because it was the most incredible company of actors that i think i've ever been in but we sometimes will perform to like 12 people at a night yeah I mean, did you see Bad Boy? Was that before your time? A bit before my time, but I, right. I saw the revival when it came to Civic Player. Right. Um, but yeah, so, but to have someone like Harry going, hello, Johnny. Oh, he's just yeah. adorable. Just adorable. Well, I've met him a couple of times, yeah, when I've had to go in to interview people. And he's, and he's, always, he's always so smart. I mean, I've never known anyone. He's got a tie, he's got the suit on, and he always, the smile is like, it's infectious. But wasn't it a brilliant, brilliant show? I mean, like Wonderful. I said, there's a lot of online shows put together, but this one, Giles yeah. Sierra did such a beautiful job. Amazing, beautiful, beautiful. I think, like you say, and with the sounds of what you guys are planning with Godspell, it's a real kind of, it shows how we're all adapting and kind of... Well, I, I, I think, and this is what I was saying to the students about doing this, acting through song thing this way and being very you know you saw the Sondheim concert you've seen the Harry concert you've seen and I think what Strassen and, and, and Thomas Hopkins are trying to do with this is to give it a real concept to so this this timeline thing and I'm not sure I'm not sure what we're going to be wearing I mean I think I think it's going to be very now I don't think it's going to be dressed up like Superman like they are in the other versions of, but I think it's going to be very of now and I think think this heartbeat thing um because i think a lot of people do feel that life has grinded to a, a huge halt and a lot of my actor friends are doing some serious reassessing of of life myself included i mean i've enjoyed i mean one i was ill and two i i, I teach mostly more than i act these days because i the acting thing it's got to be something i really i'm interested in and there's not a lot that i'm I'm kind of that bothered about anymore, you know. But um, my friends that validate themselves as actors, they are going now make, realizing that they're not having to do self tapes. They're not having to come into London if they live out of London, spending all that money, and not getting the job. All that. I think a lot of people are having a serious think about the business. Yeah. And it, does it worry you? Because I mean, you love this industry as much as I, I do. do. It's it's in us, it's in our blood. But like, how do you feel, especially with Panto? Because obviously you've done how many Pantos now? This is if I do one this year, because I've got the residency game yeah. at the Queen City Hall Church, and if I do this one this year, it'll be my twenty sixth pantomime. Wow. Yeah. So how does that? So you've done twenty five, and this is the, the first year where potentially, I mean, we'll find out in the next few weeks whether it's possible. Yeah. I mean, how does that feel, that the prospect of, of not being well, able to do it? Well, the, the, it's going to be, I mean, I mean, a friend of mine who, um, I shan't say the name of the theatre, but a friend of mine works for a theatre, and they sent me their, their potential seating plan for Christmas. Yeah. 
and the, the way it looks, and this is like roughly a theatre, roughly the same size as Hornchurch, about 600. There's going to be more people backstage and on stage than there are going to be in the audience. And you're going to be sitting there with the mask. And the whole thing about pantomime is you come and go, like, and you see the people down there and you catch it. And it's going to be, it's going to be weird. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, it's, I don't know. From the perspective of somebody who has been ill, do you feel safe going back to work yet? Is it I, I don't know. It's, it is making me, I know, as I said, I'm getting older and, I, and I've had it and there's no guarantee so that I can't get it again. Yeah. There's no guarantee. Now remember, I've got to get to work on the train. <clears throat> I'm going to be performing to respectively. Those morning shows are full of hundreds of children. Now, yeah. although the little blighters don't get it that badly, they can give it to someone quite badly. Um, I don't know. Look, I'm remaining optimistic for myself, for Doug and for Matthew Russell at the Hornchurch, and for all of my friends who pantomime is. If they don't act for most of the year, it's the one way they own a bit of money and they just remind themselves that they're actors and they're doing something, you know? It is going to be sad if it's, it's going to be, it's going to be weird. I think it, if Panto doesn't happen this year, because also, and it's been notated in the press as well, for someone like Hornchurch and Stratford East and like Hackney particularly, um, it's their main source of income. They, pantomime keeps the, the theatre going for the rest of the year. Yeah. It's such an important part. It brings the community together. Um, let's just pray that, you know, something happens. And I want to know, going back over your career, have you got any personal highlights? What are they? Um, oh God. I, my, look, my first job at, at 16 was getting into the First National Truth Jesus Christ Superstar. Because everyone said to me, oh, you, I bumped off school to go to the audition and I, I got it. And I think that was the beginning, beginning of it. Um, I mean, look, I've been so, so blessed. I've been in the, in the room with Angela Webb. I've been in the room with Stephen Sondheim doing these Oxford uh, musicals back in the 80s. Um, I've done my cabaret in New York. I've made five solo albums. I've had incredible people write songs with me. I've had incredible people duet with me. Um, I've seen the world many times over because I used yeah. to do my cabaret on the, on the Q2 and that. Um, uh, I've been nominated twice for an acting award. I didn't win, but I, my thing, just getting nominated, I got nominated through Michael Strassen for Charlie Gato and Assassins. And when I did Ed Cleveland for Robert McGuire at the Landor for Best Film Actor. Um, I, look, I... I'm very blessed that I've very rarely been out of work in my life. And when I have been out of work, I've always been good with my, my money. Um, I have a lovely home. Um, and I, I just feel very, very blessed. And as you said, like you, I love this business. But it's, it's a very different business now to what it was when I came into it. How have you managed to like, keep up with it? Well, again, I've just been very lucky. I've rolled with the times and... Um, I don't know. I just, I, I think it's luck. Uh, I think I'm good at some of the things that I do. And um, I've worked with some great directors who have taken a bit of a shot on me going, okay, and like Bat Boy was a big shot because I was, I'm not a name. Um, and they, they took a big, a big risk on, on me because the show didn't have any names in it. And my part, and I know this for a fact, um, there was a, a celeb who was really interested in doing it. He couldn't sing it, unfortunately. And he's not with us anymore, so I won't say his name. But that was touch and go for a little while, whether it was me or him. So, yeah. and I've got to ask you about Evita. Well, well, that well, hold on. Well, that really was a highlight because I was obsessed by Evita. I saw Elaine Page in that show. Yeah. About twelve times, I was obsessed. You and did then it in Manchester, I did it in the show. The show closed in London and then was going to do a season in Manchester. And John Owen Edwards, who's a wonderful MD and a friend of mine, and I did finish doing a TV series and some theatre. And he said to me, um, would you like to audition for Evita? And I said, well, what would I, what would I do in it? He said, well, the ensemble. And I said, I don't really want to be in the ensemble. I'm not in Manchester. Anyway, I, long story short, I went along, auditioned, and they offered me first cover, Chad. 
Now, I was 20 years old, 20 years old. And I said to my agent, no. And I said, go on, ask him, though, if I can do a show a week. And at the time, she said, well, no, I can't. I said, just ask him. I said, look, I don't want to do the job anyway. What have I got to lose? And Bob Swash at the time said, how many shows does he want to do? So that, they gave me two because Jimmy Keane, who was the main chain, had been doing the show in London and Jimmy had had massive heart uh, bypass surgery. He loved it. He got two shows off a week. And there was this little upstart got to do, it was the first ever alternate chair. Was I had billing. I had my name. I had a big poster out front. Um, and I, I had a whole morning with Hal Prince. Um, I mean, that again, you're making me think that. My morning with Hal Prince was extraordinary because I got to the theatre early and he was at the stage door. Now, again, most kids, most kids that I teach of 20 years of age now don't know the name Hal Prince. They don't know who anyone is, to be honest, but they certainly don't know who Hal Prince is. I knew who Hal Prince was. I'd grown up listening to Fiddler on the Roof. I knew that he produced West Side Story. I knew that this man was Hal Prince, a, 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 like a god, you know, a the, the actual god. So I got to the theatre early. He was at the stage door and, I, and he said, Johnny, I don't need the costume, just the beret and the cigar. So I went, okay, went up, got my beret, did my vocal warm up, came downstairs, put my mic on and did all the, the salve energy. And then I turned around to go, oh, what a circus. And he went, stop, stop. And I went, and he came down with the God mic and he went, Johnny, when you go on, don't use a cigar. You look like Betty Davis. <laughs> <laughs> so I never did the cigar. There was a very iconic moment in the show just before Chasing's over the circus, he turns around and there's a big puff. I didn't do a big puff because I, I look at me holding a cigar now, look, oh, what? <laughs> but then the other funny thing on my very first show, and if you speak to Rhea Jones, ask her about this. Yeah, yeah. My very first show, I closed the coffin with such ferocity, I dislocated my arm. My arm came out. I was in agony. I carried on. Oh, it was, yeah, literally my arm went, oh, it was awful. I still carried on, though. What a trooper. I know, yeah. I was 20 years old. I had adrenaline pumping through my veins. <laughs> and I want to know, what was it like living in Manchester at that time? Oh, I lived, I lived with these two gay guys. One of them was um, a dresser on Coronation Street, and the other one was a builder. I mean, <laughs> it, was a great, it was a great time. Oh my god, it was incredible. I love Manchester. It's like, obviously I'm northern, so it's like it, it feels yeah. like home, but I think out of London, that's probably a city that I would probably gravitate to and live there again. Well also the Beta Company was a great company. Yeah. We had what was the name of the place around the, the corner to the what was the name of the pub by the, by the Oh palace. Yeah. No, not the palace, the um the opera house. Oh you're the opera house. No, I can't remember. But all the Cora used to lot go in there and we used to go to the press club. I mean, we would be up to yeah. four o'clock in the morning. And I've no, I don't drink. I've never drunk. But I could stay up late then. I was young and bounced back. I yeah. couldn't do that now. I couldn't do that now. Do you ever get up to Manchester at all? I've done a couple of concerts up there over the years. Um, but no, I love it as a... I mean, don't forget when I was there, there was no Canal Street. There was none oh. of that. It was, you know... Well, hopefully, once the Hope Mills open again, you'll have to because they do rent. Hopefully, in October, if all goes ahead. There's nothing in rent for me. I'm too old, dear. No, but we could go watch it. We could go watch it. I could be your date. I can be your stage date. Lovely. I think that's going to be spectacular. Luke Shepard, who's directed and Juliet and In the Heights. Right. Uh, do you, I, I, I rent's one of my favourite shows. I yeah. I it's funny. I was in New York when Rent opened, and I didn't go to see it. And I kind of regress it now I'd, uh, kind of like, I'd love to have seen the original original yeah, car I saw, of that. I saw I, when it came to they transferred it to london right I mean, we're talking like 98 god yeah that's saw it when i was 16 and then yeah i mean you could you could do rent now kind of via lockdown you could probably do that online as well actually well this is i mean it's going to be interesting to see how they i mean they've, they've scheduled they pushed it back to 30th of october it was supposed to be in august Right. Uh, but they moved it back to 30th of October. But it still remains to be seen how they're going to, whether they're going to have to social distance within the cast. Um, so the thing is, Rent, Rent is such a physical. I mean, it's like we were saying earlier on this morning on the phone. 
is showing like the Prince of Egypt and that. I mean, yeah. the choreography alone is like cats. They're all they're 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 everywhere, aren't they? You kind of you can't you can't socially distance physical theatre like that, you no. know? It has to be adapted or modified. Uh, but hopefully it won't be compromised. It'll just be an, like I say, a new way of presenting it. Speaking of cats, though, so were you involved in the cats in quarantine? Oh, I I, I did it. No, I did it in. Um, oh, it was an incredible cast. We did it in Cyprus. Ollie Thompson was Monk Strap. Louise Diemann was Grisabella. I was the oldest, fattest skimple shanks ever there's ever been. Um, David Layton did the choreography. I mean, it was. I'd always wanted to be in Cats. Yeah. And but then I said, but I can't dance. And they said, well, we, anyway, long short of it is, but I um I did have to do. There's a bit of me online. Have I have you ever seen it? When right. I get the genital when I get the genital ball right, and I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you. It's hysterical. <laughs> learned it in the morning and then we finished it off and there's me kind of going and then I get it right I realize I've got everything in the right order um yeah I'll send it to you you'll find that funny so Harry Francis put together the cats in quarantine oh that is incredible nearly a hundred thousand you did yeah that boy's a genius how he's done that you know well, he's been doing these, all these online fitness classes and I joined in for a couple of them but they're too much I just yeah. can't do it yeah no <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I really, you know, I really admire. I mean, I, I, I never get the first time I met him, and I, I, um, and I loved him in a chorus line as well. I thought yeah. he was fabulous in a chorus line, you know. Yeah, because he's he like he was a child star. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bang bang. Yeah. No, um, I, I like it, but I've seen that. It's one of those things that keeps getting reposted. So you see cats in quarantine, um, and in fact, Bonnie Langford was talking about it the other day on on the on the Lorraine program. So, um, and he made me want to go and watch it again, you know. It's stunning. Like, yeah. how do they all they still do that? I mean, I, yeah. I get out of breath walking down the stairs. You know? <laughs> but you know what it is about that show? And I didn't do Ginny and Lynn's choreography, but there is something about, I think it's like the people, when they, they do those shows that are so physical, like a chorus line, Cats, that I, I don't think it ever leaves you, even though you get old and you maybe can't get that leg up as, as, as high as you could. There's something about that process, the way it's learned, the way it's taught, that you still can go back and go, uh, 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 and do it and look amazing, you know? So remind us, when is Godspell Online going to be? Godspell is going to be online on the 27th, 28th and 29th of August. You can get your tickets online now at www.hopemilltheatre.co.uk. And you get, I believe the streaming starts at 10 o'clock in the morning and you have 24 hours to watch it on, on each day. So yeah, you can dip in and out if you want to. Yeah. So I think that's... Um, you can pause it, you can come back to it, have your dinner. Yeah. It really enables you to be able to just, like you say, focus yeah. on what you see. And it sounds like it's going to be... So do we know yet, is it going to be the full version or is it going to be highlights from the show? There's no dialogue. It's all the score. There's no dialogue, as far as I know. It's going to be like watching the album, basically. Yeah. With such a dream cast. Yeah. And with Ruthie recreating Turn Back Oh Man, I'm not quite sure what Darren's doing in it, because, I, I, because they've got several people doing Jesus yeah. throughout it. But I'm, I, I don't really know how Darren is being weaved in and out, actually. But um, I think it's, look, I, to come back to a show that um, we, we did a recording on, we had two days to rehearse it, like in 1992, 93, and then we had two days of recording of it, and then it's gone and it's out in the ether, you know. 
but did, did something like this to come back to it after all these years. Um, I don't know, I feel very blessed, particularly in this, in this current time, that I can say if nothing else I did in this time, I was part of this first ever, yeah. you know, online concert version of Stephen Schwartz's Godspell in its 50th year. It's 50 years old this year. Yeah. Which is incredible. You know, I was only five years old when it came out. Yeah, I wasn't born. No, you weren't, no, you weren't even a twinkle in your mum and dad's eye, probably. This is quite rare. This is like, because most of the people I'm speaking to recently, I'm like, I've learned to drive before they were born. So, <laughs> yeah, it's nice to like, have somebody that's older than me. Well, you know, it's funny because for many, an early part of my career, I was always the baby of the company. I was, yeah. I mean, my first few shows, I got to baby bar. But now I'm more like granddad bar because I'm normally the oldest in a show, you know? But you are one of those people, which I give full credit to you. Everybody knows you. You're, well, thank you. I described you as infamous, and, and I meant that as a compliment. <laughs> it's like, and I'll take it. <laughs> no, because you are, I think there's, there's, there's people within the industry, I mean, everybody does it for different reasons, but there's something authentic about you. You kind of really have, you, you're not in it for the flashy parties or... No, well, I don't do any of that. I really, it's funny. I don't drink, I don't do any of that. And the, the oh. thing is, I've always been, I, I had a, I, as a kid, I knew I could sing, but I, I was kind of told at quite an early age that I shouldn't really think about being an actor because I probably would never work because one, actors don't work a lot. And two, I wasn't tall enough and I wasn't good looking enough, but my voice, you know, and thank God I, I was so adamant yeah. that I, and look, I've had the most incredible and then of course there have been jobs when they said look I wasn't good looking enough or I'm not tall enough or but you know what more often than not now you know my height and my look and everything is my my thing you know and what advice do you give to your students who are coming into this now to, to you know what I can say this as an old man is to be yourself but I think for a chunk of my career not my latter part of my career I think when I started to get into my late 20s and all of a sudden around that period of time as well, it's when they started to get real Liverpudlian and real Scottish people to play Liverpudlians. Yeah. So I haven't had to do an accent in a show other than an American accent in years because there is enough Scottish actors, man, actors from Manchester, Manchester actors from Liverpool. And then also there are enough younger actors now to be playing Tobias and Sweeney Todd. All the parts that even when I was 28 and 29, I kind of looked young. I had hair, you know. Um, so the business changed, and that's how I got into my cabaret career. Then that's when I did the cruising, and I turned my back on theatre for a while because I just went, there's nothing out there for me, you know. I think you I think two things. You have to be true to yourself. I have to look in the mirror every morning and I see, I'm looking at the camera now, and I see this. I'm not delusional of what this is. What the commodity that is Johnny Barr is this five foot seven, 55 year old man who loves singing. Um, and, and I still love the business. I do love the business. My, of course, my, my views change now with whether I'm gonna, you know, I've always wanted to be that actor that does a show, goes back to my dressing room and dies. I now think I don't wanna do that anymore. I actually, I enjoy teaching far more than I do performing. Um, and I really love teaching. I get a real buzz out of teaching. I love seeing them, them pushing them, you know. And I, I don't teach my, I don't treat my students like, like students in the room. I treat the room like it's a rehearsal. So I'm, I'm very, you, you know, you've got to, you won't know unless you make mistakes. I've made so many mistakes in my, in my, in my performing career. I've forgotten lyrics. I've cracked on notes. I've done all those things because I'm a human being. That's the other thing is you have to remember about being an actor. It's such a small part of your day, the show, but you spend the whole day waking up going, woo, 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 woo. can I do it? And then you suddenly go, oh, I got that bit wrong last night. It's so, it's encompassing of your whole life. It's a life, I say to students, you are buying into a lifestyle. I mean, and I've been very lucky. I've been very, if I could talk to my younger self now, I would go, do you know what, kid? You've been so lucky. And I am very thankful of, of my experiences, the good and the bad, actually. I don't think it's luck. I think it's the way you navigate it, the way you've kind of... 
but I have been lucky because I've had no game plan. I mean, I've had some yeah. shit agents. I've had some really bloody useless agents who think they're great. But you kind of go, I've got me that job because people know I've got me in the room because I've been ballsy enough to go, Oi, can you see me for that part? Well, whatever you're doing, keep it up. Because I want well, exactly. 50 years. Well, thank you very much. Oh, Phil, I've really enjoyed this because I know we're mates anyway, but this has been this has been really lovely to talk about Godspell, to talk about my friendships with people like like again, going back to things like you know, my friendship with Jenna is yeah. goes back to when we were kids. I'm godfather of a little one, you know, and people like Francis Raphael I've known all of my life, you know, and, and Ali Jaya is a huge part of my life. It, it, this has been a nice way of bringing, and of course, in there's Stephen in the mix and Straston. Um, I do you know, I feel this is very, I feel very blessed by being part of this Godspell online concert. I really, truly do. Well, I will definitely be tuning in. I might watch all three nights. <laughs>